good day. Look at somebody behind you. Say, today's a good day. Today's a good day. Hallelujah. How many of you know the Lord is excellent? Yes, he is. I said, how many of you know the Lord is excellent? Yes, he is. Do you know we serve a mighty God in this room? Do you know we serve a strong God in this room? Somebody put your hands on it right here. Hallelujah. Oh, lift us up right here. All the nations of the earth now rejoice. All the nations of the earth now rejoice. All the people of God sing his praise. All the people of God sing his praise. Everything that has breath shall for joy. Everything that has breath shall for joy. Everything that is beautiful belongs to you. Say, oh, 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 the earth, earth is alone. Yours. Everything is yours. Everything is yours. Everything you is you yours. Are you are oh, excellent. Oh, oh, oh. The earth belongs to the Lord. Everything is yours. Everything is yours. Everything is you yours. Everything is you yours. Are you are excellent. How, how excellent is your name? How excellent is your oh, name? How excellent is your and name? Say, all the earth. How excellent is your name? How excellent. How excellent is your name. How excellent is your name. All of the earth All the nations of the earth now rejoice. All the earth of the earth now rejoice. All the people of God sing his praise. All the people of God sing his praise. Everything that has breath shall for joy. Everything that has breath shall for joy. Everything that is beautiful belongs to you. Oh, oh, the earth is alone. Everything is yours. Everything is yours. Everything is yours. You are excellent. You are excellent. Oh. Everything is the Lord. Everything is yours. Everything is yours. Everything is yours. You are excellent. How excellent is your name? 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 All of the earth say. How excellent is your name? How excellent is your name? How excellent is your name? All of the earth say, How excellent is your name? How excellent is your name? How excellent is your name? All of the earth say, All of the earth say. Somebody put your hands on it. It's the name of the Lord to be excellent.
everything is yours. Everything is yours. Everything is yours. Say you are excellent. How, how excellent is your name? Say. Oh, put your hands on it. And all the Say he's excellent. He's excellent. Look at somebody say he's excellent. He's excellent. He's excellent. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus, we give you glory. We give you honor and we give you praise. Hallelujah. God, we give you glory. God, we give you honor. God, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we know you to be an awesome wonder. God, we know you to be a defender. God, we know you to be a master. God, we know you to be a savior. Does anybody know that's the type of God he is? Woo! Say provider. Defender. Defender. Master of, master of the universe. You know me. You are, you are an awesome wonder. Wonder, provider, provider, defender, defender, master of the universe. You know me. You are. You are an awesome wonder. Wonder, oh, 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 o
Hallelujah. What a wonder he is. Amen. What a wonder he is. Glory to God. So as I was standing there in worship and they were singing the first song, they, it said everything is yours. Everything is yours. Everything is God's. Amen. Everything belongs to him. Amen. So what are you lacking in your life? What are you believing for? What is it that hasn't come to pass yet? Have you asked God? Do you need wisdom? Have you asked God? Do you need healing? Have you asked God? Everything belongs to him. And if he is our father, guess what? A good father wants to give good gifts to his children says everything is his. So if it's his, guess what? It's ours. If we have called on Jesus as our Father God, as our Father, our Lord, our Savior, guess what? Everything is ours too. Everything. And what does everything mean? Everything means everything. It's not a trick question, right? Everything is his. And if it's good for us, then it's ours. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 That just does something to me because I, I know I try to be a good parent. You know, but I make mistakes. Amen. But God never makes mistakes. Even when it doesn't feel good to us, guess what? It's not a mistake. It's not a mistake. So if he is your father, guess what? He's not going to make a mistake concerning you. And if it's a good thing, he's going to give it to you. Amen. But you got to ask. You got to ask. And you got to ask in faith. Ask in faith. And don't be scared to ask big. If he says everything belongs to him, then guess what? You can ask big. Because he said that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, it hasn't even entered your heart. The good things he has in store for you. Ask big. Ask bold. Ask courageously. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all, ask the gift. Ask God in the day. Open up your mouth. He wants to hear your voice. I know we think about a lot of things, but he didn't say think it. He said act. He said act. That means you have to do something. You have to open up your mouth and act. Amen. Glory to God. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Well, at this time, we're going to have our weekly announcement. Amen. Our weekly Glory to God. So attention, Covenant Partners. On January the 4th, which is Monday, we will start our 21-day partial Daniel Day. Directors will be available in the foyer right after service. On January the 24th, there will be a dance recital here at the church at 7 p.m., featuring our um, Cub Studios, the, the studios that my daughter actually attends. Her teacher will be doing a recital here, um, and tickets are uh, going to be available starting today. Um, attention, New Covenant Partners. Classes will begin on January the 10th, 2021. So if you have just joined the ministry or you are interested in learning more about what our ministry has, to, um, has in store, what we believe, our vision, what God is doing, then our new covenant class um, starts January the 10th. For all other announcements and the weekly services, please visit our website or our Facebook page. And then invite others. Take time to share God's love and invite others to experience it as well when you invite them. And then, of course, our first-time visitors, if this is your first time visiting with us in the sanctuary, or if you're visiting online, please come up.
up after service. We want to just thank God for you. We want to show our appreciation towards you. Amen. And if it's you online, then just go to the comment sections, and we want to appreciate you as well. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to go ahead, stand to your feet. We're going to do our confession. If you repeat these confessions after me, oh, with me, Father God, we thank you for the vision of Revealing Truth Ministries Ocala. We are disciples of Jesus Christ and are committed to reach out with agape love, reclaim, excuse me, redeem, and restore by revealing the truth of God's word, ultimately leading others to a relationship with you. We thank you, Father, that the vision is fulfilled through our mission to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ by promoting family unity, educational development, community outreach, and economic empowerment. And that according to your word in Jeremiah 33 and 6, you will reveal to us the abundance of peace, prosperity, security, stability, health, healing, and truth. And so it is in heaven, and so we receive it on earth. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, you ought to give God a shout of praise right there. If you know it's for you, you ought to open up your mouth and give him glory right here. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Point to yourself and say, it's for me, it's for me. Oh, point to yourself and say, it's for me, it's for me. Hallelujah. Well, I would just like to welcome you to RTM. I would like to welcome you to RTM. If this is your first time here, we would like to welcome you. If you're watching at home online, we would like to welcome you. Look at your neighbor and say, welcome, welcome, welcome. Look at the other side and say, welcome, welcome, welcome. Does anybody have a praise in this room? I said, do you have a praise in this room? Do you know there's a miracle that just broke out on your row? Do you know that there's a miracle that just broke out in your seat? Do you know there's a miracle that just took off?
Brown, as I call him. <laughs> and God transformed this building from the outside to the inside. And so, amen. Thank you for all of you've done, uh, Beginning Truth Ministry. We love you so much. We appreciate all your time, your efforts, your gifts, your talents, your service unto the Lord. Amen. Now, I've got one more video I want to show you, but before I do that, um, we're going to do the offering. After that, I'm going to show you, no, after I'm going to show you this video, then I'll do the offering. Can I do the offering? Once I do the offering, I'm going to go right into the word. How about that? Amen? Uh, oh, now I'm going to have the praise team come back. Then I'm going to the word. How about that? All right? All right. All right. Okay. All right. So this video here is um, a group of guys that, that started their, their, their music career um, in, in, in gospel rap, and they wanted to use our facilities to actually uh, debut their video. And so if you'll see this video, um, uh, and it's called uh, He'll Back It Up. If it's in the Word, He'll Back It Up. And you'll see the video, they're standing in front of our sanctuary. So when it go viral, you'll see us on TV somewhere. Amen. So let's show, let's run the clip. Let's run this video. And I'll be right back. back it up. Amen. Y'all hear those words? If it's in his word, he'll back it up. Don't be asking God nothing that ain't in his word. He ain't going to back that up. He only backs up his word. Amen. Amen. Well, listen, it is time for us to sow into the kingdom. Hallelujah. Give God praise. It's time for us to sow into the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. We see here that you come in prepared. Prepare your seed to, to be sown into the service. Remember this, he who sows sparingly and grudgingly will also reap sparingly and grudgingly. And he who sows generously, that blessings may come to someone, will also reap generously with and with blessings. So, as say, the neighbor 
how you sowing? Are you sowing generously? Are you sowing sparingly? If I was you, if I was sowing sparingly, I'll turn to so willingly. And so unsparingly, ungrudgingly, but generously, that blessing may come to someone. And I will reap generously with blessing. Isn't that, isn't that enough to say, God, I thank you for the opportunity to sow into your kingdom? Amen. And in verse number seven, he said, let each one give as he has made up in his own mind and purpose in his heart. So when you come in, your mind has to be made up. I'm coming to give. I'm purpose in my heart. This is what I'm going to give. Why? Because God gave it to me. I get to give. And so our attitude is I get to give, not that I have to give. And when you understand that, God said, now I can trust you with more. I can make you my distribution center, and you can stop acting like a warehouse because I can trust you to give. Are you listening to me? And so let's go on. He says now, um, and he said, and made of his own mind and purpose in his heart, not reluctantly or sorrowfully or under compulsion. In other words, don't let nobody twist your arm. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. God don't want you to do it if you don't want to do it. Right? My wife got on my case and I told y'all she's transatlantic, so I ain't going to say that no more. She said, Pastor, you can't say that. I said, all right, then. I was just trying to make a point. We don't want our money contaminated because your attitude is wrong. So I repent. I ain't going to say that no more. Y'all, y'all, <laughs> change your attitude. She said, honey, don't say that. You can't say that. That don't sound good. I said, I said, amen. Thank God for my help. I get whipped sometimes too, y'all. Didn't I tell you what? Bless God. Anyway, all right. So listen, don't do it under compulsion. For God's love, he takes pleasure in, rises above other things, and is unwilling to abandon or to do without a cheerful, a joyous, prompt to do it giver whose heart is in his giving. And God is able to make all grace, every favor, and earthly blessing come to you in abundance, so that you may always and under all circumstances, and whatever the need be, self-sufficient. Say, I'm self-sufficient. That's me. Possessing enough to require no aid or support and furnish in abundance for every good work and charitable donation. Amen? Amen. Well, stand to your feet. Let's get ready to sow our seeds. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Ursus, you may serve the people. Some of us haven't given the kingdom builder since we did our push. But y'all see that work? The, the builder was brown, y'all. Now it's gray and blue. It calls kingdom building. Amen? So get in your mind, you're going to set every week a certain amount. Start where you are. If it's $5, start there. If it's $10, start, there. start where you are. But be consistent. Consistency is the key to breakthrough. Amen? Don't be coerced. You might can't do what I do. But do what start where you are. Turn it to neighbor. Start where you are. Don't try to keep up with the Joneses. Your last name ain't Jones. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. All right. Come on. And if it is Jones, don't try to keep up with the other Joneses. Amen. All right. Let's pray. Let's put our hands toward the altar. Let's back to Dear Heavenly Father, God, we just thank you for the seed. Lord, you say you give seed to the sower, and we thank you, Lord God, that you give us seed to sow so that we will always have to give, Lord God, on every occasion. We thank you, Lord God, that you said you will unwilling to do without a cheerful, prompt to do a giver whose heart is in his giving. So, Lord God, we thank you that our heart is our giving. We will give generously and not grudgingly. We will give um, an abundance and not sparingly, Lord God, for we shall reap that which we sow. Now, Father God, I pray that you will cause men to give unto our bosom. You said that men will give unto your bosom, Lord God, good measures, pressed down, shaken together, and run it over shall men give unto our bosom. So, Lord, we just thank you that we are obedient and we get to give. And our attitude is, thank you, Lord, we get to give you in the name of Jesus. We give you all this and we claim it in your son Jesus' name. Let every heart say amen.
Amen, amen. Our praise team is coming back. Praise the Lord, everybody. You can continue standing to your feet. We're going to worship God. Mm. Tap your neighbor and say, you're blessed, you're blessed, you're blessed, you're blessed, you're blessed. Look at somebody else and say, you're blessed, you're blessed, you're blessed, you're blessed. Is it okay that we speak a blessing over your family? Is it okay that we speak a blessing over your children? It is okay that we speak a blessing over your life. Can you just lift your hands all over this room and begin to open up your mouth and give them worship? Hallelujah. Woo. Can we sing this tune this way? Lord bless you. Hands keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. Yeah. <laughs> 
shall be glad in it. Amen. Do we have any first time guests? Any first time guests? Amen. God bless you. Welcome. Welcome. Our guest ushers, make sure they get a connect card. Amen. I'd like to make sure I will reach out to you personally, so expect a call from us this week. We'll reach out to you personally for our ushers to make sure you have a connect card. And we just want to say thank you for, for being our guest. I used to get my hug, but you know, we just watch Sunday right now, all right? Because, you know, that pandemic, we want to be a little bit cautious. I used to get my hug, and but we'll Prayerfully, we'll go back to that one day. Amen. One day soon. This pandemic got to go. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We are believing and declaring that God is in control. Amen. While you're standing, let us pray. Hallelujah. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, God, we just thank you. We thank you, Lord God, for what you're doing in this place. Lord, you are good all the time. And Lord, all the time, you are good. So, Lord, we just say thank you for being good. You're gooder than good. You're better than better. You're greater than great. Thank you, Father Daddy, for all that you've done. Thank you, Father Daddy, for loading us up with brand new benefits. Thank you, Father Daddy, for creating this day with us in mind. And so, Lord, we give you praise. Lord, if we had 10,000 tongues, it wouldn't be enough to say thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for your many benefits. Thank you for favor surrounding us like a shield. Thank you that we walk in no lack. We will always have in the name of Jesus. So we glorify your name. We magnify your name. Father God, we praise you, Daddy. Oh, on this morning, God, I pray that no one under the sound of my voice will sit here in sickness, pain, discomfort, or dis-ease. 
For your word says he was wounded for our transgressions. You were bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon you. And with your stripes we are healed. So, Lord, we declare that we are the healed protecting our health. We're thinking we're healed in our minds. We're healed in our bodies. We're healed in our spirit. We're healed in our soul. We're healed in our relationships. We're healed in our finances. We're healed in every area of our lives, which equates to nothing missing nothing lacking and nothing broken in the name of Jesus. Now, Father God, I pray continuously that you anoint their ears to hear, their heart to receive, and their spirit to contain your word. It's in the almighty, all-powerful, all-knowing name of Jesus that I pray. All that agree with that prayer, say amen. Amen, amen. amen. We're well, air hug your neighbor, and you can have your seat. Amen, amen, amen. All right, well, we're going to start, we're going to start um, get ready to do our fast. Amen? How many of you ready for a fast? Yeah. Come on, come on, somebody. Some of y'all ain't never fasted in your life. Fasting what, pastor? Fasting, feeding? Yeah, that too. But anyway, our fast director, the Lord has given me our, our fast director, so I want to talk about those real quickly. Um, and your fast directors um, will, be, will be out in the lobby, on, on the table out there. So listen. We want you to participate. This is a corporate fast. Amen? It's 21 days. Amen? Y'all pray, Pastor, we've been doing this for five years. I know. I know. And I'm not saying God's going to continue to do it. But see, here's the thing. If God reduced it, we've already started here. So if you mess up in the 21, get back on target. So when God tells us there's seven, you'll be able to do all seven. Are oh, you listening to me? I, I know what, I know. I, I, I was just like, okay, God, we've been doing this. Now, Lord, you... He said, I'm preparing us. So you start here. You know, because some people start at two days and work their way at 21. No, we start at 21. We started our way up there. 21 days, the Daniel fast, partial Daniel fast. And it's a partial Daniel fast because Daniel didn't eat any meat. You only ate vegetables. We're going to allow you to eat some meats. <laughs> Chicken and fish. All right? Chicken and fish. Now, the fast will be a partial Daniel fast. It will consist of two meals uh, daily uh, starting January the 4th. Somebody say January the 4th which is tomorrow, which is tomorrow. Okay, y'all got a little quiet on it. So from January, <laughs> January the 4th through January the 7th, you'll have two meals, the first meal at 12 noon, the second meal at 6 p.m. From January the 11th to January the 21st, the fast will be from 6 to 6, uh, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. with one meal a day after 6 p.m. From January the 22nd through the 24th, we'll have one meal a day, only vegetables from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Amen. And for the last three days, we're going to do a Daniel fast for three days. Some of us need to be cleansed out. So y'all need to be cleaned out. You've been eating all this crazy stuff and put on some Corona pounds. <laughs> I have. I'm going to get rid of them, too. I'm just letting you know. Get rid of these Corona pounds. Yeah. Rona, Rona going to got on us. Get off me, Rona. <laughs> uh-uh. <laughs> they get Rona up off me. Amen. Loose me, Rona. <laughs> Been at home just eating, sleeping, eating and sleeping. Get off me, Rona. <laughs> well, set us free, Jesus. So we're going to start off this year right, getting Rona off us. Amen. Because Rona don't own me. Uh-uh. All right. We'll be able to drink 100% juice and water between these hours. So make sure you get 100% juice, apple juice, grape juice, you know, orange juice, uh, Pomegranate juice. We're 100% juice. Read the label. 100% juice. All right. Um, we will completely refrain from eating the following um, during the fast. No sweets. Some of y'all got sweet tooth. Get rid of the sweets. No, ain't no, ain't no cinnabon. Don't go to no cinnabon. Uh, uh. No honey bun. None of that. Put it up. No breads. No bread. No carbon drinks. No soda to include coffee. Uh, no coffee. 21 days. No coffee. I heard I drink two cups a day. No coffee. 21 days. We're believing God for something. Yeah, I know, I know it, I know it. Oh, Pastor, you had me till you said no coffee. Jesus, I don't know. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. No coffee. Amen. No coffee. Don't blame me none. Don't blame me no coffee. No coffee. No fried food. No red meat. No beef, no pork, no lamb. All right? 
chicken, fish, shrimp. All right. Yeah, no Popeyes. None of that. But listen, here's what I want you to understand. These are fast directives. So don't look at what you're restraining from. Look at what you're restraining to. And so God is doing something different. And if you have ever have not done, participate in this fast. I'm telling you, it's going to be something like you've never experienced before. Because we're seeking God continuously. And during this, we'll be praying throughout the week. We have scriptures. So uh, here's the, seven, uh, the five things, six things we'll be praying for. A ministry that displays the love of Jesus, according to John 13 and 34. A ministry of people that are full of faith and patience. He said, be not slothful. For they're, they're with faith and patience, they shall what? Inherit the promise, according to Hebrews 6 and 12. We'll be a ministry of people that will not slack in any area of our lives. He said, a slacker maketh uh, poor, but a diligent hand maketh rich, according to Proverbs 10 and 4. That's what we're praying for. We ain't going to be no slackers. You, if you're going to have businesses in here, you can't be a slack, sluggard. You got to get up and go get it. And we have already released that anointing for businesses and entrepreneurs in this ministry. Amen. So we'll stand on that. We thank, uh, we thank you for the presence at all times and continuous growth and stability, according to Psalms 77, 13 through 14. We will have ease of purchase. Somebody say, we're going to purchase this building this year with ease. Give God praise. According to Isaiah 32 and 18, Proverbs 24, verses 3 and 4, and Deuteronomy 28 and 8. So these are the scriptures we're going to be standing on. And then uh, we're believing God for spirit-filled musicians. So I put it on here. I said, God, I was reluctant, but we're believing for a spirit-filled, skillful musician that sit over here in our band corner. Amen. And so we're believing that by our fifth year anniversary, by May, by May, we're going to have a musician that's going to be spirit-filled and skilled. So a ministry empowered with the spirit-filled musicians playing for the glory of God, according to 1 Samuel 16 and 17, 2 Kings 3 and 15. Amen. So that's what we're believing God for corporately. So get your fast um, directives. I will be doing a teaching on fasting on Wednesday. So please show up on Wednesday or, or log in. If you don't want to show up, log in and tune in to us on Wednesday. I will be doing a, complete, a fast uh, teaching on Wednesday. What's important with fasting? Why do we fast? What does it mean? Okay? According to the word of God. All right? Are there any questions? All right. I know it's Sunday morning. Pastor, ask questions? Yeah, that's what we do on Wednesday. We ask the questions. All right. So those are our fast directives. Amen. Well, bless God. Amen. New, uh, if you're first time a guest, please uh, come and see. Uh, my wife and I, after, after service, I'd like for you to just meet you and say thank you for being our guest. We appreciate you. Amen. I'm ready. Amen. All right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, we're starting a new series today. But before I do that, before I start the series, here's what I want you to do. We have declared this year that the year, uh, turn to say neighbor, the year 2021 is the year of abundant return. Hallelujah. Give God praise. Give God praise. The year of abundant return. And that scripture is Jeremiah 24, verse 7. Amen, amen. Jeremiah saw a vision. And I taught this on, on Thursday night. But he saw a vision. And he saw two batches of figs. One very good fig and one very bad fig. And I said on Thursday night that figs represents prosperity and security. And so what we're going to see is that those of us who really draw near to God, and he draws near to them, he said, I will be their God, and they'll be my people. So when you draw near to him, you're going to be the producers of the good fig, prosperity, and security in 2021, in every area of your life. Give God praise. I mean, your children, I mean, your finances, I mean, not just the material thing, your spirit man is going to be renewed. So a lot of times we think when we say we, uh, uh, abundantly we're going to get something blessed and material, but God want to give you more spiritual things. He want to fill you up with him. And so that there is no substitute for him. He's the only true and living God. Are you listening to me? So there is no substitute for Jesus. Hallelujah. And so as I was reading and I was studying, and, and the Lord said that the, uh, the word will be truly heard and seen. That means that in 2021, people will really hear the word, and people will see the word displayed in us. So your life will be on display all this year. Amen? So we're getting in gear, getting ready. 
for the light to be shined in the earth through the sons and daughters of God. He said, I'm doing a new thing. The church will return stronger. Families will return stronger. Love will return. Joy will return. And signs and wonders will follow them that believe. Them that what? Believe. The prerequisite is your belief. Yes. Amen? Now, in 2020, during this pandemic, I, I looked and I was studying some statistics. And some alarming statistics, I'm, they bear repeating. As I told them Thursday night, the statistic said that 53% of Christians now stream their service live, regular service, 53%. Now, out of that 53%, 35% look at their regular church service. 18% are digital church hoppers. They're looking at everybody's services. They're being fed everywhere. Y'all confused. 18% of the folks out there, they got, they're hearing this voice and this voice and this voice and this voice. Confused. So you wonder why. The statistic now says one-third of practicing Christians, which is 32%, says they have dropped out of church for the temporary time being. 32% of people don't go to church no more. So this pandemic got them. They got in a different routine. I'm in a routine. I'm going to cook breakfast on Sunday morning. I ain't, going, I ain't even going to watch. I ain't even going to log on to the service. Me and my family going to sit here. We're going we, we, we gonna, we gonna to do what we do. But soon as things come crumbling down, we want to run to the house of the Lord and baptize. But 32% says they dropped out of church. That's alarming. We got to pray for them. We have to pray. 14% switched churches during the pandemic. So that 14% of the people say, hey, I'm going somewhere else. My church ain't doing nothing. They closed down, they opened the doors back. I'm going somewhere else. I got to get there. I guess that's what they said. Or whatever their reason was. I don't know what they said. But the statistic said 14% said they switched churches. So these statistics are alarming. And we have to pray. Amen? Amen. All right, so I'm starting a new series today. Turn and say, neighbor, Jesus showed up. Turn to another neighbor and say, neighbor, did you hear what I said? Jesus showed up. Hallelujah, Jesus showed up. Amen. And when Jesus showed up, Jesus showed out. He's always a man in charge when he show up. He's a, he's a man in charge, living large. Jesus showed up. Now, I like this particular series, and I like to talk about it because that's what I thought about this and the Lord said to me that when Jesus showed up your life got to change. Let me ask you this question. If Jesus showed up, not figurative but li literally if he walked through that door on Sunday morning and actually sit, um, sat among you in the pews some of y'all wouldn't even know who he was when he came in first of all and he introduced himself as Jesus, as Jesus what would you do? What would you say? I guess the more important question is, what would he say about you? If he showed up, what would Jesus say about you? I want you to think about that. Would he say, come closer? Or would he say, depart from me? I know you're not. You workers of iniquity. What would Jesus say when Jesus showed Mm. Put the seatbelt on, guys. We're going for a ride. What would Jesus say? Hallelujah. We're going to learn today what Jesus did. Go, to, go with me to John chapter 5. Go with me to John chapter 5. It's my base scripture for this series. John chapter 5. And I want to start at verse number 5. If you're there, say amen. If you're not, say wait. John chapter 5, verse 5. You there? Amen. Now, we, 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 we hear this story, and, and we talk about, you know, Jesus healed a man at the Bethesda. But I want you to point your attention to verse number 5. He says, there was a certain man there who had suffered with a deep-seated and lingering disorder. For 38 years. Deep-seated and lingering disorder. For 38 years. 38 years is a long time. 
to be suffering with a, the Bible calls it a deep-seated, lingering disorder. Now, how many of you have deep-seated, lingering disorder? I don't like her, child. Deep-seated, lingering. Child, who she thinks she is? Deep-seated, lingering. I don't know who pastor thinks he is. I put my pants on the same way he put his pants on. You don't know how I put my pants on. <laughs> That's the reality of it. My pastor used to say, I could float from the sky and jump into my pants. You don't know how I put my pants on. <laughs> you don't know. I could lay the pants out in the floor and just dive in them. You don't know how I put my pants on. <laughs> but some of us have deep-seated, lingering disorders. And those disorders cause us to be dysfunctional. And those dysfunctional cause the church not to show up. So the world see a dim light because the church light has gone out. But Jesus said, I'm about to show up and I'm about to show out. I'm about to blow your mind. This year, like never before, you're about to see the abundance of who I am. I am the Lord thy God. Are you listening to me? Let's see what it says in the Message Bible. Watch this. The Message Bible, he says, one man had been an invalid there for 40, uh, 38 years. I want you to hone in on 38 years. 38 years. Some of y'all couldn't last for 38 minutes. My 38 years. Can you imagine this man couldn't do anything for 38 years? Can you imagine your mama not talking to you for 38 years? Mothers not talking to their children for 38 years. Deep-seated, lingering disorder that also become generational curses. But Jesus, somebody say, but Jesus, showed up. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Jesus showed up. Jesus is a direct replica of God. He will always cause things to change when we encounter him. Jesus, we want to know you for ourselves. When Jesus shows up, great things happen. How many of you agree with that? Great things got to happen when Jesus show up. Why? And just like this scripture said that this man had a deep seat, uh, deep seated, rooted, um, a lingering disorder for 38 years. But when Jesus showed up, Jesus changed the whole thing. It didn't matter that he was there for 38 years. Jesus showed up on the scene and he changed it just like that. He asked the man a question. Do you want to be made whole? So I have a question to you. Do you want to be made free? Do you want to be made whole today? Jesus showed up. So every person is uniquely made and created by God. Therefore, Jesus meets everyone in different ways. You're wonderfully, carefully designed by God, uniquely orchestrated by God. So he deals with us in our unique way. Sometimes when Jesus shows up, things may be, there may be physical manifestations. Anybody ever had the shaking of your hand? Anybody ever had fallen out on the floor and, and anybody ever had, you know, uh, rolling on the ground and you might laugh, you might cry, you might sing. But sometimes when Jesus shows up, there's a physical manifestation. It's called the Holy Spirit. Sometimes the Holy Spirit gets you quaking in your hand and gets you shaking in your boots and gets you just, you know, jumping for joy. And sometimes people just silent because sometimes the Holy Spirit don't cause for any physical manifestation. He can solve your problem in silence. But so long, we get into this deep, whoo, you feel my hand shaking. Oh, yeah, yeah. Jesus is moving. But what happened when he was quiet? And he has that deep, still voice that's saying, I'm calling your name. What good will you do? Will you choose me or will you choose the way of the world? choose you this way whom you will serve for we cannot serve two masters you either gonna love one and hate the other he says so i'm calling you to come closer to me as i show up you get up <laughs> as i show up you get up hallelujah 
he says, sometimes we may not feel any physical manifestation at all, and it's all right. Jesus can do things in our lives without us even knowing about it. Anybody ever had like that? And suddenly, that's what we call those, and suddenly, boom, it's done. And suddenly. We must remember that Jesus is not limited to church leaders. He's not limited to a building. We can encounter Jesus any time he wants to meet with us. Isn't that good news? And as a neighbor, Jesus showed up. Now go with me to John chapter 20. And I'm going to spend the rest of my time right here. John chapter 20. And I'm going to start at verse number 19. If you're there, say amen. If you're not, say wait. John chapter 20, verse number 19. When Jesus shows up, here's my first point today. When Jesus shows up, he, ad he addresses our doubts. When Jesus shows up, he addresses our doubts. Turn to the neighbor. When Jesus showed up, he addressed my doubts. In other words, I have no reason to doubt because Jesus is here. Let's look at John Chapter 20. Are you there? Now, I like this account because this whole entire series, starting with verse number one, as I give you a backdrop, this is when Jesus was resurrected. And Jesus began, he, he was showing himself to Mary, um, first of all. He appeared to the disciples, and Mary stood there. She was in awe because you know, uh, he was no longer there in the tomb. And so he, she went and she told everybody that Jesus had, was resurrected. But the point I want to spend time is in verse number 19. He said, then on that same on that same first day of the week, when it was evening, but the disciples were behind closed doors for fear of the Jews. Disciples saw what they did to Jesus. They were there when they killed him, and they scattered. And so they were still afraid of what could happen because the disciples were Jesus' homeboys. He was Jesus' homies. They were there when they saw him crucified on the cross, but they were also there when he told them, I will rise again in three days. And so they are there behind closed doors because they scared. How many of y'all running scared? Locked up in your house, scared. Ain't went nowhere since March. Corona got you scared. Why am I saying that? Because we then take on some of the attributes of the world. Instead of the world following us, we follow the world. Instead of us using wisdom, instead of us using um, insight from God, we draw back in fear like the world. And if we draw back in fear, we cannot overcome in faith. Fear and faith cannot stand in the same place. And so when you begin to draw back in fear, the Bible says that they were locked and closed behind doors for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. And said, peace to you. Now notice the first word Jesus said is peace. They had just witnessed and scaredness and fearful, but Jesus came, listen here, peace be unto you. He said, you ain't got it. In other words, he said this, ain't no need of you running scared, I'm with you. He said, y'all saw what they did, but I showed up just like I said I would. I got up just like I said I would. So peace be still. He said, I need you to have peace in your mind. I need you to have peace in your spirit. I need you to have peace in your home because I showed up just like I said I would. Yeah, Lord, we saw you, though. They killed you, and they, they nailed you, uh, your hands to the cross and your feet to the cross, and they put this, this crown of thorns around your head, and we saw all that. But when Jesus showed up, Jesus said, I don't care nothing about all that. What y'all saw was a, what had to happen. It was reality, but also what I told you, that is in three days, I'm going to rise with all power in my hand. So I will get up, and when I get up, I'm going to show up. So here's what Jesus said. Here I am, y'all. That, that, that's what Jesus was saying. And he said, here I am. Didn't I tell you I was going to show up? Didn't I tell you I was going to get up? So the same thing that Jesus did, he want us to do. He said, I need the world to see you. Get up from your depression. Get up from your anxiety. Get up from your frustration. Get up 
and tell the world about me. I am the Lord God Almighty. He said, so peace. I don't need you to be worried because I got you. Don't worry about if your job went out on you. I got you. Don't worry about if you're going to eat. Don't worry about those things. Because he said, don't I even care about the lilies of the field. I care about the birds in the air. They need to toil and not spin, but I take care of them. Don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about what you're going to drink. Because when I show up, you're going to have plenty. And Jesus said, I want you to get up for peace. Turn and say, neighbor. Peace unto you. Whatever situation you're going through, I speak peace, shalom, right now in Jesus' name. Give God praise. So saying, he showed them his hands. And he showed them his side. And when the disciples saw the Lord, they were filled with joy. They were filled with delight. They were filled with exaltation. They were filled with ecstasy. In other words, they were filled with uh, uh, overjoy, overwhelming joy and rapture, overwhelming feeling of joy. But listen what he did. Sometimes Jesus got to show you he's really there. And see, when he's seen and you've seen, if you were disciples, you saw the physical death on the cross. You saw when they beat him and they bled and he bled all night long. And he hung. You saw that with your natural eyes. So in the natural things, you're going to be scared of what they might do to you because they did it to Jesus. But Jesus said this, that when they did those things unto me, they had to do them so you could see with your own eyes that they whipped me and the blood can stop me from coming for you. The crown can stop me from coming to you. The whip of the cat of nine tails can stop me from coming back for you. Jesus showed up. He said, yeah, yeah, I took all that. And he said, I took that beating like a big boy. Yeah, I, I got my big boy drawers on. I took that beating just for you. Blood running all down my face. Blood running all down my leg. Blood running all down my body. But I decided I ain't going nowhere because when I do rise, I will get up with all power in my hand. And the world will know that Jesus showed up. <laughs> he showed up. But here's the thing I like. How many know that sometimes you can see things with your natural eyes, but it ain't really until you touch it? So they, 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 they saw it, but they, they, they still didn't believe. So Jesus said, listen here, you still don't believe in me. Put your hand in my side. Put your hand on my hand. Let me show you the nail prints in my hand, the piercing of my side. It is I, I got up with all power in my hand. Oh, Glory to God. I am God. I am God. And without me, you can do nothing. But all things are possible to them that believe. Jesus showed up. Oh, Ramanere and watch this, watch this now. And having said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. Now watch this. It was symbolic that the breath that he breathed on the disciples was just like the breath that God breathed into Adam and they became a living soul, a witness for Jesus so when he breathed on them because he had already promised the Holy Spirit is coming. He's going to be a comforter. He's going to be a mighty counselor. He's going to be the Prince of Peace. He's coming back, but in order for him to come back, I got to breathe on you. Woo! God. So Jesus breathed on them. And when he breathed on them, the disciples got a second wind. They said, oh, now, here we come. Daddy have breathed a fresh breath upon us. And now we can do the things that he did. 
He said, and he breathed on them. Somebody turn and say, neighbor, neighbor. Jesus, Jesus. breathed on me. Woo, give God praise, give God praise, give God praise. Jesus breathed. And then Jesus, watch this. Watch this, I want to keep you here. He said, then Jesus said to them again, peace, peace. He said, after I breathed on you, after I put my spirit in you, after I made you a new creation, then I want you to just go your way in peace. I want you to not worry about anything. I want you to not worry and cast those cares upon me because I care for you. I want you to go and live your life in peace. Search for peace. Let peace be the final rule. Peace be with us. During this year, peace will be with us. Peace in your home. Peace to your children. Peace on your job. Peace in your family. Peace be with you. Are you listening to me? Oh, Lord God. And having said this, he breathed on them. Now watch this. Now having received the Holy Spirit and being led and directed by him, if you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you retain the sin of anyone, they are retained. Now he gave them power to cast out sin. Just like him and God had the ability, he transferred that anointing to his disciples when he showed up. So when Jesus shows up, there's a transferring of the anointing that you can lay hand on the sick and they shall recover. You can speak to the blind eyes and it shall be open. You can tell that sick person, get up. I don't care if you've been lingering for 38 long years. Jesus showed up and when he showed up, he said, get up, rise up, take up your bed and walk. Oh, God, take up your bed and walk. You've been lying dormant for too long. You've been lying there in the same old place for too long. Oh, y'all listen to me. Somebody say, Jesus showed up. Oh, Lord. Are y'all getting this today? Watch this, watch this now. But Thomas, somebody say, but Thomas. One of the 12, they call him Thomas the twin. One of the 12 called the twin was not with him. When Jesus came, <laughs> somebody was missing in the bunch. Thomas, old doubting Thomas, was missing when the disciples had their first encounter. So watch Jesus do it again. <laughs> Let me tell you something. When Jesus show up and those are your doubters, when they're not there for the first encounter, Jesus will do it again. Watch this. Watch this. He said, but Thomas... Uh, he was with him in verse 25. He said, so the other disciples kept telling him. Somebody said they kept telling. We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, unless I see his hand, the marks made by the nails, and put my finger into the nail print, and put my hand into his side, I will never believe it. I will never believe it. How many of y'all got people around you like that? They see you being blessed, but I don't care, baby, until he do it for me, I will not believe it. He changed your life, and now you are giving others life by your life. He said, until I see it, I ain't going to believe it. That's why some folks try to keep you back in your past. They ain't going to believe it. They didn't believe Jesus showed up, and when he showed up, he changed your life. They didn't believe that. They believed you when you were still back there struggling. But now you're not struggling no more. They, they believed when you were living paycheck to paycheck. Now you're living in abundance. They believed you when you were pushing your right foot and laying your left foot, trying to get to where you got to go. They didn't understand. You didn't have two nickels to rub together. But now you're walking in the overflow, and they don't believe it. But your life has to be evidence that Jesus showed up. And when he shows up, baby, you ain't got to say nothing. Watch what he did. Watch this. And then eight days later, somebody eight days later, eight in the number of a new beginning. He said, so Thomas, you don't believe in eight days, in a, I'm about to give you a new beginning. And so he said this, and eight days later, his disciples were again in the house. And Thomas, this time, was with him. Jesus came through. They were behind closed doors. 
stood among them and said, peace to you. Jesus showed up. He said, okay, Thomas, you missed me the last time, so watch me show up again, and this time you're going to see what they saw. And I'm going to tell you the same thing I told them. Peace. Peace, brother. Do this. I got this. Do this. Everything is all right. About it, about it. It's all righty. Okay, watch this. Watch this. And I like this part right here. Then he said to Thomas, watch this, reach out your finger here and see my hand. He said, Thomas, you said you wouldn't believe it until you were able to do it for yourself. He said, so because you missed my first encounter, I'm going to give you an opportunity to see me again. And because you were the doubter, Thomas, you need to do something. I want you to reach your hand in the same place I had your disciples to reach your hand, reach your hand in my hand to feel where the nails were drawn through my hand, Thomas. So watch this. Watch this. Then he said, Thomas, reach out your finger here and see my hand. Put your hand in the place it's in my side. He said, put it in there where the blood came out. Put your finger in the hole where the blood was coming out. Put your finger right there to plug the hole. Ooh, he said, then he said, Thomas, reach out your finger to here. See my hand and put your hand and place it in my side. Do not be faithless and incredulous. But stop your unbelief and believe. He said, now, you said you'll never believe it until you put your hand in my hand. Until you put your side and see where they pierce it. He said, so now you see me, stop your unbelief and believe. So Jesus said, now, since you've seen it, I'm calling for your commitment. I'm calling for you to line up and straighten up. You said you need to see it. Here it is. I'm right here in your face. Thomas your hand right here. So what Jesus said, now I'm calling for a commitment from you, Thomas. You said you weren't going to believe until you see it. Now you see it. What you going to do? What you going to do? Uh, can you imagine God doing that? Now, now you see it. What you going to do? You had to see something for yourself. Now what you going to do? Are you still going to make excuses? What you going to do, Thomas? You put your hand in my hand. You put your hand in my side. What you going to do? Turn to the neighbor. When Jesus shows up, what you going to do? Y'all hearing me? What, what, what you going to do when he show up and he, he, he makes a way? When he said, you needed some proof, here's the proof, Peter. I mean, uh, Thomas, here's the proof. Now watch this. This is the good part. Y'all listen. Then <laughs> Thomas answered him, my Lord, my God. Wait a minute. Now Thomas believed. Thomas said, now what Thomas really said, you're not just a master. You're not just a teacher, but thou art God, the living God. You have shown me that you are God. So Thomas couldn't waver in his doubt anymore. See, when Jesus shows up, he addressed your doubt. He said, if you doubt me, let me just show you how real I am. Put your hand in my hand. Put your hand in my side and watch me do it over again. Now, there ain't nobody had to tell him now. See, the first time, Thomas got a report. Some of y'all know how it is. Girl, yeah, I heard you. You just religious. You all the time doing all that. You all the time telling your test of lies. But Thomas got a chance to testify of the goodness of Jesus because he had a personal encounter with Jesus. He put his hand in his hand and his hand in his side. And Thomas, all he can say, Lord, my God. That's what you say, won't he do it? He said he would, yeah. Because Thomas just got the okie doke. Thomas just got jacked up. He got the okie doke. And Thomas couldn't say nothing, but you know, they told me you showed up. He said, but I ain't believe them, God. They told me that, 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 that they saw you and you came through the doors when they were locked. I couldn't even fathom that, God, because I wasn't there to see you walk through the door. See, Jesus, he did two things. His resurrected body went through a locked door to get to where the disciples were. Let me tell you something. Jesus will walk through the wall to get to you. You are his disciples. Mm. His resurrected body went through the wall. 
They were behind the cold doors. They were behind the locked doors. But Jesus said, listen here, I'm God. I'm going to walk right through those doors because I got an assignment on the other side. My assignment is you, and I'm coming to get you. Jesus showed up. Jesus showed up. Oh, y'all listening to me. And then, he said, Lord, my God, can you imagine when you got an account with Jesus? Ain't nobody tell me nothing. Don't write me another note. Don't send me another Instagram. Don't send me another instant picture. Don't put no post on Facebook. You ain't got to tell me nothing. He showed up for me by himself to me personally. Now I know who Jesus really is. I have touched his hand for myself. I have touched his side for myself. And all I can say is, Lord, my God. <sighs> That's all I can say. Because this Jesus is real. He's a real big God. And when he, and I'm able to touch him for myself, you can't tell me no more. Your report don't matter because I had a personal encounter with him. I ain't got to read about your testimony. I got a testimony for myself. I got a song that I can sing. I know that I've been redeemed. I was lost, but now I'm found. I was a sinner, but now I'm free. He picked me up out of my place of where I was, my low state. And he picked me up and he said, my child, I have showed up just for you. Whew. I'm almost done. Y'all. Are y'all getting it today? I, I'm trying not to get happy. I'm trying to stay calm, Miss Tony. I'm just, I just feel Jesus because I, I, I understand. You, some of you don't understand. But when everybody counted you out, when they told lies on you, when they said you'll never be nothing, when they told you that you're only going to be a backyard project pimp, you'll never be anything, you're going to be a no good for nothing, your mama would nothing, your daddy would nothing, but I come to serve notice to you. When Jesus showed up, he made something out of nothing. He took my nothing and he made me something. Jesus showed up just for me. Oh, Jesus, he showed up just for me. Mm. <laughs> if I seem like I'm taking it personal, I am. It's a personal encounter with the Lord. I know him for myself. I know what Jesus can do for me. Oh, God. And suddenly, he turned that nightmare into a dream. And suddenly, he turned my disaster into joyous occasion. And suddenly, he picked me up out of the dark, and he brought me into the light. And suddenly, I had an encounter for real with Jesus. I'm almost done. Can y'all hang with me? Give me 10 more minutes. I'm almost done. Yo, Koramase. And that's when the Bible says, yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. He's my rod to get me back in line. He's my staff to yank me back on State Street. And wherever I go, I can walk there with my head up, knowing that Jesus is there in the valley to take me to the mountaintop. Ooh, Jesus showed up. Oh, yes, he did. Oh, yes, he did. Okay, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Watch this. Watch this then. Oh, are y'all getting something out of this? And then verse number 29. So Jesus said to him, because you have seen me, Thomas, do you now believe? Some of the turn and say, neighbor, because you've seen Jesus, do you now believe? He said, do you believe? Do you trust in? Do you have faith in? He said, blessed, happy are you. Be envied. And those who have never seen me and yet have lived and be have believed and adhered to and trusted and relied on me. Hallelujah. But watch this in verse number 21. I, I need to go back up for a minute. I think I missed a spot here. Uh, oh, y'all listen to me, right? Mm. Yeah, in verse number 21, watch this. Go back to verse 21. He said, then Jesus said to them, again, peace to you. Just as the Father has sent me forth, watch this, so I am sending you. I meant that. So here's what Jesus said. He said, now you're no longer disciples. I'm calling you to be apostles. 
He said, I'm getting you a transference of the anointing that's on my life. He said, so now, since my father has sent me to disciple you, I'm sending you to be an apostle for others. He said, I got your assignment. It's greater. So he told them, now you go on and you do something different. Hallelujah. So Jesus said, your assignment has been changed. That's why I had to come back. I had to come back to the disciples to let you know that you now have a new assignment. You are now apostles. Go and set up other churches. Go and tell other people about the goodness of who I am. You can't no longer be happy with me just showing up. You got to do something about what you just encountered. So he said, I've changed and given you authority, not as a disciple, but now as an apostle. Go set up shop. Go reach the nations. Go reach the masses. Go let everybody know about the encounter you had with me. And then verse number 30. There are also many other signs and miracles which Jesus performed in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written, recorded in order, that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ. He is the anointed one, the Son of God, and that through believing and cleaving and trusting and relying on him, you may have life through in his name, through who he is. Give God praise. Give God praise. Jesus showed up. Jesus showed up. Turn to the neighbor. Jesus showed up. Turn to the neighbor. And when he show up, again, I will be ready. Give God praise. Hallelujah. I'm done. Come on, stand to your feet. I'm done. Come on, stand to your feet. Give God glory. Give God glory. Come on, give God glory. Give God glory. Give God glory. All over this building, give God glory. Jesus showed up. Ah, we're going for a ride this series. I'm telling you. We got a lot more this series. I, if I was you, I wouldn't miss it. Because I'm telling you, this is just an intro. Jesus showed up. But when he, when he showed up, he's going to tell you about yourself. He's going to show you your weakness. He's going to show you your mess, your growth mess. Hallelujah. So get ready. When Jesus shows up, we don't know what to expect, but he will reveal our growth parts of us. He's going to reveal some stuff. Jesus get to the heart of the matter when he show up. Oh, yeah. This is all in this series. Get ready. We're going for a ride. Hallelujah. Let's go. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you. Lord, we declare that you are in this place. We thank you, Lord God, that you showed up and we had an encounter with you on this morning. So, Lord, we say thank you. Lord, even if there are some of us who were like Thomas, you showed up just for him again. So, Lord, if you got any doubters, our doubters, become questions, and our questions become belief. And if that belief turns to the answer, then we have done what we set out to do. So, Lord, we thank you for delivering us from our unbelief. Thank you, Lord, for showing up in our situation. And, Lord, we have to, you have declared this morning, it doesn't matter how long we've been in it. When you show up, we come out instantly. So, Lord, we thank you for an instant return back to you in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, if there are some of us who don't believe, God, I pray that you help their unbelief. Just like the man that said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. So, Father God, if there any unbelief in here, I pray, God, that you would help them to believe. Help them to know who you are. Help them to trust in you, lean on you, rely on you. Because your word never fails. So, Lord, we thank you. If there's anybody here that just don't think they ever could be who you said they can be. Help them to believe. And you show up in their life just like Thomas saw you for himself. Let the doubters have a personal encounter with you. Father God, we give you glory. We give you honor. Praise you. Amen. Well, give God
God, praise, I'm done, I'm done. Amen. I'm done. I'm not done, I'm going to stop. Let me say that. I'm not done, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. There's plenty more where that comes from. God is showing up for us in abundance. So if you're here today, if you're watching us online, watching us via social media or through our Facebook live page, we appeal to you today, if you're not saved, and you want to know this Jesus I was talking about, I would not leave this place without getting to know him as my Lord and Savior. Because unless you accept him, you'll never get to know him. And he said, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Christ was raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So if that's you, and if you're here and you want to be saved, Give your life to God. Give your life to Jesus. He's waiting on you. So if that's you, raise your hand and we'll pray with you. If you're watching us via social media or online, type in decision. And we have a prayer we'd like for you to pray with us. So we'll pray this prayer. And when you pray this prayer, you're saved. From this day forward, I will follow your way. Jesus, you are my risen Savior. You are the Redeemer of the world. I repent of my sins now, and I receive your love and forgiveness. Today and forevermore, I give my life to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Friends and family, if you repeated that prayer, welcome to the body of Christ. Give God praise. Hallelujah. Secondly, if you're here and you say, well, Pastor, I want to rededicate my life. I want to get in a place and a position this year. I'm going to start this year off right. I want to I reposition myself for the return. <laughs> I'm ready for the abundant return, but I need to return to him first. So if that's you and you want to rededicate, you can type on the screen, rededication. If you're here in the building, raise your hand and we'll pray with you to rededicate your life to God. Thirdly, if you're here, you say, well, Pastor, I'm saved and I want to receive the gift of the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. Now, I often say this, tongues is a gift to the believer. And the unbeliever is evident. They should desire that tongue, wanted to speak and communicate to their heavenly father and the devil can interpret. What a powerful gift it is. What a powerful language it is to speak to God, to speak to Jesus, and the devil don't know what you're saying. He upset with you because he can't understand you. He can't interrupt you. He can't interpret you. He don't know what you're saying, but God knows. So what an awesome gift. So if that's you and you would like to receive that gift, Raise your hand and we'll pray with you that you receive that gift. If you're watching us online, type in Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Last but not least, if you're here in this building and you say, well, Pastor, I want to make a decision today. I want to become a covenant prophet. I've been coming and I've been praying for a church that God can lead me to a church that I, where I can learn, I can grow, I can develop. And I often say it like this. We don't have any hocus pocus. We don't have any magic. All I offer you is the word of God. But I promise you this. If you get in this word and you really live this word, your life will change forever. I promise you that. In fact, my pastor said, I just try it for 90 days. And I guarantee you, you will make a habit out of it and your life will change. So if that's you and you looking for a church home, we'd love to have you. We've been praying. In fact, we pray that God will send people from the north, the south, the east, and the west with the revision of Revealing Truth Ministries Outreach History Center already, what, tattooed, where? On their hearts. So that's you. If you're watching us online, you can type in Covenant Partner. If you're here in the sanctuary, why don't you get your things and come join me here at the altar? We'd love to receive you as a part of our, as our family. There's a lot of work for us to do, and we need you. Amen. We need you to assist and do your part. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, none came. There's still always room. Amen. Give God praise. Give God praise. Thank you for watching us online. God bless you. We're so glad that you tune in to us today. We love you. And come see us again, Wednesday or Sunday. God bless you. Amen. Give God praise. Give God praise. Give God praise.